What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Denali, aka Don Squally, back at y'all with another YouTube video. This one, today we're going to be doing an install on some wheel bearings for the G35. Now obviously this will also work for 350Zs, 350GTs, anything with a rear wheel drive VQ setup. I think it'll also work for the G20s and G35s uh, for those rare occasions. But what I ended up going with was a couple of cheap wheel bearings off of Rock Auto. Now I had a couple people um, recommend different brands but to be honest i'm just looking for a cheap replacement for the time being and if these are as easy as i think they're going to be to change then it shouldn't be an issue if they wear out prematurely but what i have here is a set of durago um wheel bearings now i paid about 70 bucks a piece for these plus shipping i think it came out to about 160 shipped uh to my door which was not too bad now I'm, I'm not sure when the last time these wheel bearings were done definitely not under my ownership so I'm expecting things to be uh, quite a bit corroded and rusty so we're just gonna take our time with this one uh, what I need to do is obviously jack the car up throw some jack stands underneath and um, take off these front wheels well I'm gonna do the this side first and then if I need to, I'll give myself a little more space on that side. So jack the car up, take the wheel off, and uh, see what we're working with. Alrighty, so now that we got the car jacked up, I turned the wheel. Um, I guess this would be to the right. And basically what you're going to want to do is come up behind. Let me see if I got us in camera. Right here is one bolt. Here is another bolt, 22 mil. Now, I've seen people do it where they take the caliper off and then the bracket I've also seen people do it just by removing these 22s. So I'm going to get in there, see if I could break those off. Before we do that, I'm going to spray it up with some uh, oil of the penetration variety. Get just a little splishy splash there, splishy splash there. Let that uh, do its thing and come in here with a big old breaker bar. Well, my Stanley and a big pipe on the end of it, but it does the same thing, man. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, remove these two bolts, and then show you guys what's next. All right, so I can find another part. I hope this is going to be enough to break these loose. A little tight, but top one's off. That's a little scary. Woo! Alrighty. Bottoms one, bottom one's off. Don't know how much of that you guys saw. I'm going to go and get some zip ties, and when I pull this off, move it to the side and just zip tie it out of the way now with these I like to undo the bottom first uh, that way the top will like hold the bracket and it doesn't come like flipping down on you make sure you get your washer off I'm gonna put one of the lug nuts just thread it on to keep the rotor from falling off because it's a little bit loose and the rotor and this whole uh, caliper bracket with the caliper and the pads is about to come right off so just keep that in mind again with the washer and there's the whole caliper assembly so like I say I'm gonna grab myself a little zip tie here just kind of hang it off of the what looks to be the sway bar alrighty so calipers all supported I got some zip ties here you just want to make sure you don't put any tension pulling on this brake line here so now that you got the caliper supported I'm gonna go ahead remove this lug nut and that's gonna get the rotor allow the rotor to pop off these rotors aren't in terrible condition just a little rusty from sitting uh, next year I was actually thinking of open lapping this car um, just for fun but uh, if I do, I'll probably buy some new brakes and uh, just wear these ones out until they're down to nothing and then put on the new brakes. So you can definitely hear this wheel bearing's a little clanky. Make note to your dust shield, uh, the orientation. I'm just going to do a little videotape for my own purposes. Kind of bevels in like that. Uh, so once you get your brake uh, rotor off, what you're going to want to do is come around back and you're going to see one, two three four bolts that you need to undo now i have seen people take off this abs sensor i'm mine doesn't look too too rusty i'm going to try to get 
the wheel bearing off without taking off the ABS sensor. Um, now, for those of you guys who are all-wheel drive or have the Ultima or Maximas and you guys are watching this video, you're going to have a drive shaft coming from the transmission into the center of the hub here and there's going to be a cotter pin with a castle nut right here oh sorry guys not even in the shot uh there's going to be a cotter pin with a castle nut inside here and once you get those back bolts off you're going to have to give this a little bit of a tap i'd recommend putting the nut back on just tapping it lightly until that pops off and um but yeah for the rear wheel drives luckily this is pretty easy I'm gonna go ahead, spray this up with some WD-40 and hopefully these come off as easy as the other bolts did. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the nut at the very bottom just cause that seems to be the most problematic and obviously if anything happens, I wanna be able to drive this thing to a mechanic without it uh, messing up on me. So I'm just gonna go nice and easy here. Uh, feels like we're getting a little bit of uh, Little bit of stripping action happening there, which I can't say that I'm a fan of. Try it with an actual wrench, I guess. Uh, alrighty, so the bottom nut is loosened. I kind of had to tap this socket on there. Let me just make sure that we're actually loosened here. Yeah, the bottom nut is loosened now. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead, loosen up the rest of them. Hopefully everything goes good. Had a little bit of a scare there. I tried to use the wrench, but it was almost starting to uh, starting to strip there. So go ahead and do the rest here. And uh, fingers crossed, boys and girls. Alrighty, so I got all four bolts loosened. Again, I'm going to try to tackle this bottom bolt because uh, from my understanding... It's the hardest one to get out. Okay, so once you get your bolts pretty well loosened, what I like to do is just thread uh, one or two of them back in, use a socket, and then just give it a couple of taps on the hammer and you'll see it start to separate right there. Um, so that's what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead, now that I got it pretty well separated, I'm gonna remove the rest of the bolts here um and then this should come off with the dust shield so i'm gonna go ahead i guess take care of that right now uh, and there you have it wheel bearing looks pretty much pooched making a hell of a lot of noise uh the dust shield mine's a little corroded on there but should just pop off i don't know if any of these are signs of bad wheel bearing having rust in there but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's not a good thing. Now it looks like there's just a little bit of debris and dirt inside here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a wire brush and get rid of as much of that stuff as I can. I don't want any of that stuff getting caught up in my wheel bearing. Um, now it looks like this bottom nut here didn't actually have to come all the way out. I'm hoping that once I get that new wheel bearing on, put it on and then just lightly thread it. You can see it's kind of caught up on this piece right here but um that was really the only thing that i was worried about so i'm gonna go ahead get my wire wheel looks like the abs sensor is right here so i want to stay clear of that so i'll just make sure to give this a, a light cleaning and uh that should be pretty good man Alrighty, so it seems like i'm having trouble getting the new wheel bearing in there's a lot of rust and stuff around this lip so I am going to take out the ABS sensor as well as this little plastic cover off of the back. I'm going to go ahead and run and grab my drill with a little uh, wire wheel and I'm going to come in here and really clean this up nicely. I thought I can get away with it, but it doesn't look like I can get the new wheel bearing in without actually hammering it into the uh, where it's supposed to be. So we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to set this guy aside here. And then grab my wire wheel, just all inside here. There's, you can see there's a little bit of rust, quite a bit of a lip here. Just having trouble fitting the wheel bearing on there. So, like I say, wire wheel it is. And I'm not sure what that stuff is. I'm going to try not to breathe it. Alrighty, so I got a majority of the debris out of here. Um, as much as I think I'm going to be able to get right now. So I'm going to replace this plastic cover back in here. I'm just going to feed a couple of the bolts through here and we can go ahead and throw on the hub assembly. 
and obviously make sure that your dust shield is oriented the proper way. Alrighty, so dust shield's on, plastic shield is on in the back. Gonna throw the ABS sensor back in with our 12 mil. So I'm gonna go ahead, snug all four of these bolts up. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and snug them up uh, nice and tightly in a star pattern, similar to what you do on a wheel with, I guess, four lug nuts. What I'm gonna do now is just throw the rotor on and I'm just gonna put a lug nut on the bottom again. I don't know if you guys can see that, just to hold the rotor in place as I'm mounting the uh, caliper here. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut the zip tie. Slide that on there, get in our bolts just threaded, make sure nothing's cross threaded here. And once you get your bolts pretty much finger tightened, just go ahead and snug them up with a ratchet wrench here. Ugh. And that right there is a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so that took me... I'd say about an hour and a half running back and forth, grabbing tools, figuring out this. I had to take off the hub once because I forgot to put that plastic shield on. And then this dust shield back here, I put on backwards, as you can see. Clearance, very minimal. So had I put that on the wrong way, probably would have been getting a whole lot of noise. That right there is the, oh, that's definitely the dust shield. Feels like, like the dust shield's rubbing somewhere, so I'm gonna go ahead and just see if I can figure out where that's happening. Alrighty, so that's just a little bit of the rust rubbing on the pads, but the dust shield was just touching a little bit back here, so, you know, test everything before you throw your wheel on, and uh, yeah, so what I think I'm gonna do is probably tackle the other side, and if anything comes up, I'll let you guys know before we put an end to this video. Alrighty, so second side's all done. It's a little bit stiffer than the other side. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be like that, but this wheel bearing here actually isn't even that bad, so I'm gonna probably keep this one just in case I have any issues with this one here, and that way if I need to return the part, I can uh, put this on temporarily, but I'm going to put all my tools away, um, take the car out, I'm going to give it a good wash, I'm going to take it into town to the spray booth, uh, hose it down, give it a good pressure wash, make sure everything's running good, uh, no weird grumbling noises, and I think that's going to be just about it for this one. So if you guys did enjoy this one, you found it helpful, don't forget to smash that like button, you guys got any comments, um, advice as to what I can do differently next time, also don't forget to let me know. And uh, with that being said, I'm thinking that's just about it. So as always, I'm your boy Denali, a.k.a. Don Squally. Just want to say thank you guys for watching. We get to catch y'all mofos at the next one, man.